For this sketch, we're in the castle kitchens, where we're going to do a high-low thing, like an old English period piece, because there's nothing more topical than Downton Abbey. But seriously, splitting the sketch in half is going to help you keep MHC1 and MHC2 organized in your mind. Then it turns out that preparing dragon meat for knights and squires involves some important steps, and these steps will help you remember how antigens are processed and presented to T cells. We'll start with some general setup. First off, you'll note that access to these kitchens is restricted, a reminder of MHC restriction, because a T cell is only able to recognize an antigen if it's bound to a specific MHC molecule. This is in contrast to B cells, which are able to respond directly to an antigen. Getting more specific, CD8 positive T cells always only bind to MHC class 1, hence our killer knight waiting to collect their antigen, or dinner, on the first floor. Helper squires, CD4 positive T cells, have to climb to the second floor to collect their supper, as CD4 positive T cells can only bind to MHC class 2. And maybe you've already heard this a million times, but another way to remember this is that if you multiply the CD number and the MHC class, it should equal 8. 1 times 8, or 2 times 4. Alright, these hungry T-cells are waiting on dinner, so let's get cooking. The overall goal of this castle kitchen is to break down antigens and load them onto MHC molecules so that they can be served to the proper T-cell. Let's start on the first floor, or with the MHC1 pathway. So, it's kind of gross, but this bottom kitchen is infested by little mouse dragons that live inside the kitchen. That's not the gross part. The gross part is that they taste like chicken. Anyway, these pesky mouse dragons represent antigens that are found inside the cell. Once processed, these endogenous proteins are presented by MHC1 on the cell surface and provide a window into what is being produced inside the cell. As tasty as house mouse dragons are, they still require a bit of processing, and the first step is... Yeah, that. Newly produced endogenous proteins, again meaning proteins that come from inside the cell, are cut up into smaller peptides inside proteasomes. The fact that they're newly produced is helpful because it aids the T-cell army in responding earlier to an infection. Now, placing that rather large cleaver aside, the cut-up mouse dragon peptides are then poured out of their bowl, which requires some tapping to get every last bit out. This tapping represents the TAP transporter, which brings the peptides into the endoplasmic reticulum, or in this case, into an ER-shaped cooking mold. Finally, a special member of the kitchen team, wearing an MHC1 badge, serves the delicious meal to the killer knight waiting outside. This final step symbolizes peptides being loaded onto MHC1, moved out of the ER through the Golgi apparatus, and finally to the cell surface for presentation to CD8-positive T-cells. Okay, let's see what's cooking up on level 2, where a package has arrived from afar, imported dragon meat. A delectable delicacy, to be sure, it's stamped with an imported label because MHC2 presents exogenous proteins, or those that are found outside the cell, to CD4-positive T helper cells. The big burlap sack holding the dragon meat is both industry standard packaging and sketchy symbol for the phagosome. The phagosome encases the exogenous proteins and brings them inside the cell. Now, simultaneously, you'll notice the two-tasseled pillow, representing MHC2, getting moved along this royal kitchen's golden transport system by the invariant chain. The invariant chain has a few roles here. First, it helps the MHC2 move from the endoplasmic reticulum through the Golgi apparatus and to the endosome, and it also prevents interference from other unwelcome wandering peptides by blocking binding to MHC2. The large clip on top of the two-tasseled pillow represents the clip portion of the invariant chain, which blocks the MHC2 binding site. Nothing else is allowed to rest on the fancy pillow. It's only for imported dragon meat. Meanwhile, the phagosome sack has spilled its imported dragon meat onto the cutting board, where the cleaver is chopping it up. This symbolizes the action of the phagosome combining with the endosome, the place where the exogenous proteins are chopped into bite-sized peptides. Mm, so tender. Supervising the finale of this process is the Dimaitre. Anyway, that's not Mater D, it's D Mater, who's standing in here for HLA DM. The DM has the honor of releasing the clip and allowing only the most tightly binding exogenous peptides to attach to MHC2. That is, they only allow the finest cuts of imported meat to be loaded onto the two tassel pillow for service. And finally, the delicious pillow meat, or MHC2 peptide complex, is transported to the cell surface for presentation to the waiting and hungry helper squires, or CD4-positive T-cells. Bravo, castle chefs. Bravo. 
It's truly a beautiful immunological and culinary process. But before we take a taste, let's do a quick review. MHC restriction refers to the fact that a T cell is only able to recognize antigen bound to a specific MHC molecule. CD8 positive killer T cells bind to MHC class 1, while CD4 positive helper T cells bind to MHC class 2. MHC1 presents endogenous proteins, those that originate from inside the cell. First, proteasomes cut up the proteins, then the TAP transporter moves the cleaved peptides into the ER. The peptides are then loaded onto MHC1 and displayed for CD8 positive cells on the cell surface. The MHC2 process is a little different. MHC2 presents exogenous proteins, or those found outside the cell. First, the proteins are enveloped in a phagosome and brought into the cell. Then, the invariant chain helps MHC2 move from the endoplasmic reticulum along the Golgi apparatus to the endosome. The clip, which is part of the invariant chain, temporarily fills the MHC2 groove to prevent other peptides from accidentally binding. The phagosome then combines with the endosome and the proteins are chopped up into peptides. HLA-DM releases clip, allowing peptides to attach to MHC2. The MHC peptide complex is then transported to the surface of the cell for display to CD4 positive helper T cells. Hmm, dragon meat, definitely an acquired taste. Uh, would pair well with a full-bodied Syrah, I think.